Hey everybody, this is Kylo from Love My Switches, and today we're going to be doing a short little video on how to customize the look of a pedal by swapping out knobs and washers to make it a little more unique. It's super quick and easy, and really, anybody can do it. Specifically, we're going to be using the Mood from Chase Bliss Audio and Old Blood Noise Endeavors. This one's already a gorgeous pedal, but this one in particular is a gift for someone special, and I thought it would be fun to personalize it a bit. In short, we're going to show you how to make this look like this. So stick around and we'll walk you through how to totally transform the look of your pedal in just a few short, easy steps. Before we get started, let's go over a little breakdown of everything you'll need to make this happen. First, of course, you'll need a pedal. And you'll also need some tools to remove the existing knobs on your pedal. Now, the type of tool varies depending on the type of knob, so you have to check and see whether you need something like a flathead screwdriver or, like in my case, an Allen wrench or a hex key. In fact, sometimes you'll need more than one, as the hardware used tends to vary between manufacturers and knob type. For this particular job, I'll be using two different Allen keys which can be bought through our store, like everything else in this demonstration. I'm pretty sure I used a 1 16th inch key and a 1.5 millimeter key, but don't quote me on that. The next thing you'll be needing is a set of replacement knobs. In this instance, I'll be using our anodized aluminum magpie knobs. They come in a variety of colors and they just look really cool. There's not quite anything else like these. And then next, to replace the washers, you'll need something to remove the nut that's fixing the washer into place. You can use a variety of tools here, but since this is a gift and I'm concerned about scratching the finish, I'll be using these neat rocket sockets, which we sell in our shop. These things are super handy, and I cannot recommend them enough. You can buy either a full set or just the individual size you need. For this instance, I'll just be using one 8mm socket. Lastly, you'll need your replacement washers, and here I'm going with three different colors to match the knobs above them, because I think that'll look super consistent and cool. And with that, you're ready to get things underway. So we're going to start with the knobs here, and all you're going to do is take your Allen key from earlier, pop it into the back, and unscrew that knob, twisting it gently, and setting it to the side for later, because you never know. And then from there, once you have all six of those knobs removed, you're just going to work in reverse order, popping the new knobs in place, and then fastening them with a different Allen key based on the hardware for that specific knob, which I'll show you here. So then what you'll see here, just from a different angle, is me once again taking that Allen key, loosening the hardware connecting the knob and removing it, and then putting into place the new knob here. And now here you see me lowering the shiny new blue magpie knob in place, swapping out my Allen key, and then tightening that securely onto the potentiometer. As I'm tightening it, I'm taking care to make sure that the indicator is in the same spot as the previous knob, and tightening it not that it's too tight to the point that it's difficult to turn, but that it's not so loose that it's going to be wiggling or slipping off of when the actual pedal when I'm twisting it. This does require a bit of finesse and will take some trial and error on your part, so don't be disparaged if it takes you more than one go to actually get it in place. Switching over to the top-down view, I'll just be adding a replacement knob again to show you again the importance of making sure that your indicators line up with the original knobs on your pedal. That way you're getting an accurate reading based on where the position of the knob is when you twist it. You can test this once you've got your knob secured by twisting it all the way clockwise and seeing where the indicator winds up. This knob in particular, when maxed out, is supposed to stop around the 5 o'clock mark and it looks like I've just about nailed it. From there, it's just a matter of repeating those steps five more times until you've got all of your knobs secured in place on the pedal. Man, that looks cool. Now that we've got knobs out of the way, it's time to move on to the washers. I've got my rocket socket here, and I've got my cool, colorful washers on the side, and working with the rocket socket here couldn't be easier. Like I said before, I've got my 8mm rocket socket to match the hardware that's securing that washer in place. You could use any ordinary socket on this, but because of the finish on this pedal, I'm going to be using the rocket socket in particular so that it's a little bit easier on that paint. I don't have to worry about any scuffs or scrapes. Uh, again, this is a gift, so I really want to be as careful as possible. So I've got my socket in place, I'm loosening that hardware enough so that I can just spin the rest of the way with my finger, removing it and setting it to the side, taking care not to lose that. Ideally I'd have some sort of dish here or something, but it's on camera so I'm not too worried. Then I'm just going to remove that flat original washer, and then put into place my sweet blue washer that I'm replacing that with. Then from there we're just going in reverse order, popping that hardware back on, and then once I've got it a little bit secured with a couple twists of my fingers, I'm going to pop the rocket socket back on to kind of finish the job. Switching angles once again, you can see here that I'm just going to place that socket right over the hardware, stabilize it with my finger on the top, and then turn that counterclockwise just enough to loosen the hardware so that it'll be somewhere near the middle, and I can just spin the rest of that off with my fingers. Again, if you're doing this at home, I really can't stress enough the importance of having a little dish to keep your spare hardware in to prevent it from rolling off the table and then vanishing into oblivion forever. It has happened to me before, it will happen again. Now I'm going to be lowering down my new shiny blue washer in place. It's going to be doing all of those steps basically in reverse order, 
reapplying that hardware, giving it a few twists to fasten it in place to make sure that it's secure on the actual toggle, replacing it with my pop socket, and then finishing the job by twisting it clockwise to secure it. Beautiful. So now we just add the other two, and voila, there you have it, a totally custom, tricked out pedal, ready to be gifted. Hopefully this video came in handy and gave you some ideas for sprucing up your pedal board at home or making a special gift for somebody this holiday season. As always, if you have any questions for us, you can reach out via our website, lovemyswitches.com, or through Instagram, Facebook, basically wherever you can find us. Until next time, thank you so much for tuning in, and uh, we'll see you around.